Hey guys, still there. Tactical time. Actually, ranked time. Um, we're on the map. Bloody hell, what's it called again? Mudfest? I don't know. I really, really never know how to remember these maps, and usually I do relatively know the strategy. Anyway, deck for this time around is the Dutch. It's a pretty large map for a 1v1. It is Conquest, so I have to take as much terrain as possible, and I have been taking some of your suggestions to try and make my forces as cheap as possible, so that they are at least semi-spammable. So I have a couple of Grenadiers that I'm going to send to Bravo. And let's go with a couple of those. I'm going to send a couple of Stingers with them, and some Marines, to make sure that they have at least some anti-tank capability. It's not going to be too specific or too impressive, but let's hope that it works. And actually we're going to move that entire battle group over there. That seems to be a bit closer. Now all of you line up. And you go over there. Then my main punch is going to come through Gulf to Hotel. For that I'm going to use the quite excellent tanks that the Dutch have. Leopard 2A5, Leopard 2A4, the Recon Leopards. I'm also going to require quite a bit of AA to keep all of those units safe. So let's go with these. I'm going to keep one CV here. I'm going to buy one more CV to go to Echo. And I think that that should do it. So a small holding force in Bravo, a pushing force through Gulf Hotel and right into Delta. Do I have points for anything else? I can get a Pratt at medium long range. This is all too expensive. 45, 25 for another Stinger team. Nope, I think that this is all I have points for, so let's go. Now, let's see if I can actually get a um, <laughs> rank up instead of what I've been doing lately, which is just, well, ranking down. Fortunately, that's not quite possible with my current rank of nothing, actually. A couple of these guys relocate, the others over there drop off. CV to cap and hold. Small lead. Let's start by fielding a few more support units over there. If they do want to try and crest that ridge, then they're welcome to try. Now, last time around it didn't go really well because I was spread out. I had tried to put forces everywhere, which really didn't work that well for me. So this time around I'm going to make one big fist and go right through one of these zones. Trying to focus all of my firepower on that point to provide such an overwhelm, or at least that's the intention, that I can kill virtually anything. Electric Voodoo coming in, which I believe is a Canadian unit. I thought I had these guys disabled. Well, at least they are now. That's one of them dead. Weapons up. Hold on the cheetah for a while. I have to keep these guys a little bit away from this position. Push in. This is a pretty decent veterancy. So that could be quite a dangerous unit. Fire, fire, fire. Do not get a side shot. Ooh, my Leopard 2A5 is almost gone. 64, move. Drop off. Push through. reinforce this position. Offload. There's a Stormer. Keep moving. Cheetah, same for you. Cheetah there. It looks like he has decided to go the other way. He is using his strong suit over on the left and putting a lot of forces over on this end. I just lost... No, I didn't lose my 2A5 yet. There we go. Um, I lost a Recon Leopard. This is probably an anti-tank plane. Yep, Harrier GR7. That's a Recon dead. No, that's a 2A5 dead. Another tank here, please. Try and find their CV. Oh, fuck me. Left is dead. I wouldn't be surprised if I'm going to get killed off again quite quickly. 
barely any hits there. And I got barely anything left. So I'm going to have to get over there ASAP or I'm toast. And he can bring in forces quite a bit faster than I can. Especially at this range. Give me a recon leopard to defend the base. Oh, fuck. Come on. Cheetah. There's the voodoo. Yep, now I'm fucked. I got no way to kill the Toe 2. Other than machine gun fire. Which, let's face it, is not really going to kill anything. Let's send over another escort. Grenadiers are pretty much fucked. Yep, this is going to be another very, 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 very quick defeat. Not much I can do. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Hit. And toast. Well, that was fun. Let's do that again. Oh, I maybe just should stop playing ranked altogether because I am absolutely atrocious at it. Lost my CV. He's at a plus two. I can still field units. So let's field another 2A1. Yeah, you get to hold over there. Now, I killed some of his forces, although probably barely enough. There's a kill. You're going to sit over there. That was the seed aircraft again. Yep. Electric voodoo came in. And what we have here? Uh, it's some sort of AA. Ooh, you survived. But only because he got an optical failure. Yep. Game over. Alright. So. Losses. 1400. Kills. 415. That was fucking terrible. <laughs> Pardon my language. That was even faster than last week. Last week, I at least lasted 7.5 minutes. This time around... I got defeated by a fucking corporal. And, uh... And he did it in five minutes. So let's do an after-action review. What the hell did go wrong? What did he use? What can I learn? Because you could say that this is failure. I consider it feedback. There is quite a bit to learn from the ranked game. But the best thing... Um, is that I'm getting to improve my gameplay. Let's have a look. Neutral view. My force composition on the left, I'd say got pretty far. I made it all the way here, almost to his spawn. And I think that I got his attack quite accurate. By the looks of it, He's focusing most, if not all, of his firepower on this tree line. Bravo. I'm not sure why you'd want to do that, though, because it is quite limited in its efficiency. In the sense that, while you do have firepower, surely, there's going to be a difficult area to push through after you've pushed through Bravo. So that is quite the challenge. Over on the left... Let's see what he's using. An Aslav 25, which is, I believe, a good spotter. A Maxis. A Challenger 1. Mark 1, that is. One Coyote. Very good optics on this one. And one Stormer, which multi rolls as anti airplane and I'd say anti helo. Not so much anti ground. I know it can fire at ground targets, but let's face it 12 AP. Yeah. So, really, his push is coming through Charlie. And for that, he's using, I'd say, medium infantry. Rardens, Chieftains, Minigun. Interesting to see these guys about. A fire support vehicle. A hold. What do we have? A 10-point fire support vehicle. But that Minigun can chew through infantry very, very fast. And... Yeah, especially with a rate of fire like that and one HE damage, you're going to consistently put out a lot of hurt on the infantry. 
Most of which is probably outputted even before my infantry actually made it to the safety of the tree line. You can see my forces coming up. Now I'd say that the strategy in itself was not terrible. In the sense that channel. I had most of the forces that I wanted to push through in a good composition. 2A4, 2A5, two recon leopards which also have a significant amount of firepower all by themselves. 15 armor penetration, 50% stabilizer and these things really didn't stop moving for a minute. All of his forces are pushing through the tree line. That's where I made my first mistake. I stuck to the road. I need to get them, let's say, to there and then start off-roading. I lose my first cheetah. Let's see, what can you see? Nothing. You can see one group of infantry there. And you know that the Maxis is over there, but ah, now you can see. Barely. Barely. All of his infantry is offloaded because he saw that I've been coming in. The infantry that he's using is Assault Pioneers and a whole lot of Canadian Rifles. Green Jackets, Chieftain Mark V tanks for fire support. Which, yeah, I'd say they would work in a tree line like that. Normally inside a tree line like this I would consider the CEV, but it probably isn't mobile enough for a ranked game. I found that these games tend to be over very, very, very quickly. So he's pushing infantry, infantry, yeah, right, infantry through the forest. TH four five, sorry, four nine fives at the lead with KBA twenty five auto cannons. That's something I didn't have. There goes the Maxis. He encounters my Marines, which are immediately getting hammered by the auto cannons. Now these guys do have a decent rate of fire of twenty rounds a minute, so they should be able to take out at least a few of these. Provided they're not completely stunned. Second group gets killed. Yeah, he just completely wipes out all of my infantry. My escort pushes through as fast as possible. Gets wiped out by the stormer. This one, my main tank... There we go. That's part of the problem. My main tank force should probably just stuck to the road. If it did, then it wouldn't have had to slow down. On roads, I can get up to 110. Off-road, 70. So I'm losing out on pretty much half my speed. And especially for, I believe, the Cheetah. Well, actually, it doesn't matter that much for the Cheetah. I was going to say the Cheetah's probably a lot slower, but it's quite alright. Now, at this point, he's probably realizing that all of my forces... Yep. All of my forces are orchestrated towards the left. He spotted the 2A5, the 2A4, GR7 with paveways comes in to counter the 2A5, which he seems to lose line of sight on. What did he try to bomb? Yeah, he did hit the 2A5. The 2A4 surrenders, I'm uh, sorry, survives. He has one commander's 90. Jeez, I got real close. This game could have ended very well for me if I had kept my cheetah offline. If the Cheetah would have been offline, and the Cedar Craft didn't take it down, then I would possibly, just possibly, have made it to Delta in time to kill the CV. That is, if he hadn't sent out any of those aircraft again, but even if he did, then he might not have been able to kill both the 2A4 and the Recon, so that I would have been able to push through, kill his CV. But I think that the cheetah, or actually the death of the cheetah, because it was still active, is what caused me this victory. Because with this thing gone, my tanks were utterly defenseless. And when I saw that lynx come in, I knew that that was it for the tanks. Now he wipes out my entire infantry force, spreads out his own forces quite a lot. Interestingly, the only infantry which has spotting capability is the green jackets over there. The Chieftain Mark V is just being sent forward, knowingly, because all of my forces and all my points have been spent here already, so he doesn't really have to worry. There comes the Voodoo. Voodoo fires, instantly kills the Cheetah. The Toe 2 fires its first missile, has 7 left. For some reason, it probably lost line of sight. 
Yep, tree line got me. It spots the 2A4. I try to close in. 2A4 gets hit. 2A4 does not get hit. Recon Leopard takes a hit and dies instantly. And that's when his forces encounter my Grenadiers, which were supposed to be on the way to Bravo. They're about to run over my CV with a tank. There it is. I lose Echo. And the rest of my forces that I did have came in over the wrong area. I should have put those th directly through the front line. And that's when the last of my tanks dies. Okay. So lessons learned. Make sure that you have some sort of quick response force to a lot of infantry on a map like this. That is definitely something that I need to do. If I'd had one of the F-16s on standby with a bombing payload, so let's say 500 kilograms or a thousand, then that would have been positively deadly. And I probably could have knocked out most of his infantry. Aside from that, he didn't really have that much. He had a couple of auto cannon wielding transports. And had my Laro not been in the predictable position, but pretty much closer towards the edge, then the Leopard 2A1 might have arrived in time. This is also something that I can still pick up from. The Commandos 90 that he had over here. This was basically his counter rush force. In a way. Because while it could deal with infantry and vehicles to some extent, provided that the vehicle came right up to it, it could not deal with any kind of air threat. So had my uh, helicopter actually made it through, it probably would have been able to kill both this CV and that one. And the match would have been over in mm, five to six minutes, something like that. Again, though, I noticed that there is no use of radar-guided AA. That seems to be a pattern among the players that I've encountered so far. No use of radar-guided AA. The Hornet that he's using... 130 point is not very expensive, but very effective. 60% accuracy with the AIM-9M against helicopters, meaning that the thing can definitely do a lot of damage against helos, and it carries six of those. The AIM Sparrows are pretty good. ECM is only 30%, turn radius 400, so you'd prefer not to get this Hornet into a dogfight. Alright. That's when my Apache tries to make a last dash forward. And I believe that... There we go. It doesn't even get to fire the last shot because it got killed off. Or actually because I lost the game due to the CV going down. Okay. To sum up. Lessons learned. Make sure I do not spend nothing on a bomber. I need a bomber to make sure that I can counter any kind of infantry. Especially in a map like this. Maybe I need to have an Apom bomber, but you never know which kind of map you're going to get ahead of time, so that is a problem. Second, make sure I don't use radar-guided AA. Probably a coalition of Dutch-German would have been better here, because I could have just sent forward a radar-guided Roland unit, and I would not have had to worry about using the... Uh, or the use of the seed aircraft by the enemy. Next, the infantry force that I sent forward was pretty much doing exactly what it needed to do in the sense that it was being a holding force but it just did not have anywhere near enough firepower to withstand an onslaught the way that it did. So while I'd say that my gameplay was a bit better than last time because I used one, um, let's say, spare point, one, I believe the Germans would call it a Schwerpunkt, a main thrust of your attack, while that worked out decently the execution could have been better. So I'm going to go back to the drawing board and redo this deck or just adjust the deck so I have something that I can work with a bit better. Let me know what your thoughts are. Any appreciate or any advice will be much appreciated because, let's face it, this is the third game that I've been playing in Ranked. And while I am learning a lot, I haven't actually won yet. Still, I believe that that is going to be happening sometime soon. So, let's see if I can get the win next week, Friday. For now, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned. Definitely, I did. And uh, maybe you picked up something as well. Thank you for watching. hope you enjoyed. And I'll see you soon for more videos.